Hi friends, today we are going to see the past year need questions for the chapter Biotechnology, Principles and Processes. So in this video, we will cover part 1. Now, now let's begin with the first question here. The DNA fragments are separated on an agro shell, can be visualized after staining with dash. So when we come to the staining method, why do we need to stain? The first question, to visualize. Why do we need to stain? To visualize. Only when we are able to see those bands, only then we can identify what it is. So the staining process is to visualize. That is why we do a staining process even for bacteria. Because we, when we view it under a microscope or something, or even it can be a naked eye, you need to identify them. Directly staining nucleic acids in live cells and tissues with minimal processing reveal the natural location of the cells in the tissue. Now there are many stains which are used but the commonly ones so you have something called flash blue. So that is also one kind of stain which is provided with concentrated liquid stain that when diluted can be used for both rapid and overnight staining of DNA fragments. But apart from that, the one that is closely or one that is effectively used is a fluorescent stain which is named as epidium bromide. So you simply call it as ETBR. So this is the abbreviated form. This molecule will actually bind with the DNA in the gel. Therefore, the correct answer to this question is option C, epidium bromide. It is used to stain the DNA fragments that will appear as orange colored bands when kept under the UV light. And that is because of the fluorescent uh, thing that is present in the stain next question here a gene whose expression helps to identify transformed cell is known as so here this question again and again asked in the year 2017 so here you have four options okay vector plasmid structural gene and selectable marker i think all of you would have guessed the answer yes it is selectable marker selectable markers are what Selectable markers in recombinant DNA technologies helps in identification and eliminations of non transformants and selectively permits the growth of the transformation transformants. So apart from that, the main purpose is to identify. That is why they use markers. Apart from that, if you want to know anything about uh, see the markers that we go that we go in are selective markers, right? selectable marker would you call that as a selectable marker is gene that is introduced into a cell especially a bacterium or to the cells in culture that confers a trait of suitable for the artificial selection so identification that's what everything talks about therefore the correct answer is option d next question here what is the criterion for dna fragments movement on the agro gel during gel electrophoresis so what is this gel electrophoresis what is this gel electrophoresis how can you describe gel electrophoresis see gel electrophoresis is a method i mean it's a it's actually a genetic engineering method it's a method for separation and analysis of macromolecules and their fragments and that separation is based upon two aspects one is the fragment size and the other is the charge so these two aspects are kept into mind so what is the criterion for DNA fragments movements on acros gel during a gel electrophoresis? It is a method of separation. One thing you need to remember here is, is a method of separation. And uh, two things are taken into mind. One is the size and the charge. Therefore, the correct answer to this question is option A. The smaller the fragment size, the farther it moves. Yes, when the molecular weight is less, it can, it can move very fast, right? If it is heavy, it will not be able to move. DNA fragments during gel electrophoresis separate according to their size due to the sieving effect produce, produce, pro, I mean provided by the agros gel. Fine. Next question here. Okay, now let's move to the next question. Which of the following is not a feature of plasmid? So what is a plasmid first of all? How can you describe a plasmid? See, a plasmid is an extra chromosomal so what is a plasmid? It's a genetic structure in a cell that can replicate independently of the chromosomes. Typically, so this is about plasmid. So you have four options here, independent replication, circular structure, transferable and single stranded. So which is not a feature about it, which is not a feature about it? The correct answer is option B because plasmids are double stranded. 
okay plasmids have an extra chromosomal double stranded circular dna and to your right side you can see a picture of how it is it is circular at the same time it is double stranded so which is not a feature in the four to the four options option d is the right answer next question here the tag polymerase enzyme is obtained from dash very easy question but before we go into the option let's see what is this tag polymerase it's an enzyme okay so this tag polymerase is actually called as a thermo thermo stable it's called as thermo stable what is it called as thermo stable dna polymerase and it is named after the thermophilic eubacterial microorganism which is thermus aquaceous from which it was originally originally isolated by a person in 1976 and the often the name is abbreviated as tag or tag pol okay so the tag polymerase is an enzyme that is obtained from the microorganism thermus aquaceous and which lives in hot springs so it's 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 actually a thermophilic the microorganism or the bacteria which can survive extreme conditions especially when it comes to a high temperature okay you call them as thermophilic bacteria and why and how can they survive such condition is because of the uh, polys i mean the polypeptide chain that they have in their cellular wall okay it's actually a lipid content you also have a lipid content in them that is why they can survive such hot climate therefore the correct answer is option a next question here which of the following okay which of the following is a restriction endonuclease okay what is a restriction endonuclease see a restriction enzyme or a restriction endonuclease is an enzyme that will cut dna so what do they do they cut dna they cut DNA at or near specific recognition nucleotide sequences which is known as restriction site. So you have different uh, restriction endonuclease or enzymes. So first you should need to understand what is the activity of the restriction endonuclease. So it's an enzyme which will cut and that too it will not cut anywhere. It will cut at the restriction site what you call it as specific site. The recognition nucleotide sequence. So once it is cut what happens? Automatically it moves to the next process. So here out of the four options given here the correct uh, I mean the correct option is option A HIN2 which is a restriction endonuclease among these HIN2 is a restriction endonuclease okay so if you want to know anything about this HIN2 okay HIN2 if you see uh, it's it's actually the recognition sequence HIN2 restriction endonuclease recognizes the double stranded sequence and the sequence goes like this. I'm sorry, G, T, uh, I'm sorry, Y, R, A, C. Okay, in the DNA strand and cleaves about Y3 position in the sequence. It is a type 2 restriction enzyme which brings about endonucleatic cleavage of the DNA to generate double stranded fragments with a terminal 5 phosphate in them. So it's a phi dash thing. Therefore, the correct answer to this question is option A. Next question here. The cutting of the DNA at specific location, okay, becomes possible or became possible with the discovery of dash. Obviously, the answer is a restriction enzyme. Just now we discussed in the earlier question the cutting process and that too it will not happen everywhere. Only at the recognition nucleotide sequence. So the cutting of the DNA at specific locations became possible with the discovery of the restriction enzymes. You can either cut, you can insert, you can edit, you can do anything. So that cutting process was helpful only by the discovery of the restriction enzymes. Okay, next question here. The DNA molecule to which the DNA of interest is integrated by cloning is dash. Okay, this is again an easy question for you to answer. So imagine you have a DNA molecule and you want to insert something of your interest okay so you are giving you're doing it by your own wish you're doing it on your own interest so how do you do that you need some medium for it to transfer it right you just can't straight away insert it that is not possible now for example even if you take the malarial parasite plasmodium uh, when plas when we come in contact directly with the malarial i mean the plasmodium we are not going to get affected but there, in order the organism to get um, 
to show its disadvantages on the organism, on the living organism, whoever which who are whoever are affected, it requires a vector for it to transfer it. So it uses a mosquito for it. Mosquito is a vector for the protozoan disease called as malaria. Likewise, here the DNA molecule to which a gene of interest is integrated for cloning. So you have a vector for it to transfer it. The correct answer is option A. A vector is a DNA molecule which is used as vehicle to carry the gen gene of interest to another cell. Therefore, the correct answer is option A. Next question here. An analysis of chromosomal DNA using the southern hybridization technique does not use dash. So you should know what is the southern hybridization. So you have anything, uh, I mean you have so many things. You have southern blotting, uh, southern hybridization and everything. Now coming to this southern hybridization technique is a method used in the so where do you use this study about you use in the study of molecular biology that we know right for the deduction of specific DNA sequences in a DNA sample southern hybridization or blotting combines a transfer of electrophoresis separated DNA fragments to a filter membrane and subsequent fragment detection by the probe hybridization okay but basically what is a hybridization how can you describe it how can you describe it how can you describe hybridization yeah what is this hybridization it is a process of producing hybrid in reproductive biology for instance hybridization refers to the process of producing offspring by mating to parents from different varieties or species okay now this southern hybridization i've given you enough ex example i mean enough explanation for it so here if you see the correct answer is option pcr pcr is a technique that is used enzymatically that is used for enzymatically replicating dna without using a living organism such as e coli or yeast it is commonly used in medical and biological research labs with a variety of tasks like deduction of hereditary disease identification of genetic fingerprints so an analysis of chromosomal DNA using the southern hybridization technique does not use PCR. That is different and this is different. Okay. Therefore, the correct answer is option D. Next question here. Which vector can clone only a small fragment of DNA? Very easy question for you to answer. You have chromosome, you have yeast artificial, bacterial artificial, cosmid, plasmid and so on. So the correct answer is option C, plasmid. As we all know, plasmids are extra chromosomal circular DNA. They are small extra nuclear circular DNA strands which are which carry extra chromosomal genes in the bacteria and sometimes they are used in fungi as well. They replicate independently the best known vectors which are also available commercially. You have uh, RPBR322 and PUC18. Therefore, the correct answer is option C. Next question here. During the process of isolation of DNA, chilled ethanol is added to dash. Ethanol, so before we go into the answer, you all know ethanol is a non-polar molecule. It's a non-polar molecule while DNA is a polar molecule and it has a net negative charge due to the phosphate groups attached to it. So when DNA is placed into a solution of 100% ethanol, it becomes insoluble and precipitates out of the solution. So it's moreover the concept is very simple here. Opposite, opposite charges ob obviously get attracted here. So what happens the one being polar and the other being non-polar? What happens? DNA will precipitate out. It will not mingle with it. Therefore, the correct answer is option B to precipitate DNA. Okay. Next question here. The colonies of recombinant bacteria ap appear white in contrast to the blue colonies of non-recombinant bacteria because of dash. So I will tell you the answer here. Uh, you have a table here. Maybe you can uh, look at it. See recombinant versus non-recombinant. Recombinant DNA, P DNA is a piece of DNA that has been created by the combination of at least two strands. While non-recombinant is a DNA which has not been subjected to re recombinant technology. So, Ron recombinant bacteria containing beta, beta galactosidase is the answer. Okay. So, I have given you an explanation what is the difference between recombinant and non-recombinant. So, here the question clearly asks us, the recombinant bacteria appear white in contrast to the blue colonies of non-recombinant bacteria because 
non recombinant bacteria contain beta galax galactosidase that is why they appear blue therefore the correct answer is option d next question here genes of interest can be selected from the genomic library using dash okay this is again an easy question for you a hybridization probe is a fragment of DNA of variable length which is used in DNA samples to detect the presence of nucleotide sequence we all know that and that will be the target DNA right that are complementary to the sequence in the probe so the probe hybridized to a single stranded DNA whose base sequence allows the probe tar target base sparing due to the complementary between the probe and the target so this is an explanation that I would like to give here so where do you select it from the genomic library how do you select based on the DNA probes therefore the correct answer is option C next question here the figure below is a diagrammatic representation of the E. coli vector which is PBR 322 which one of the following options correctly identifies a certain components okay so here I'm going to give you the answer directly so that you can go through it see we have given the plasmid 322 here ORI it represents you have ORI right you have this part what does it represent it represents the site of origin or replication that is why it is origin ORI represents origin ROP is represents those of proteins that take play, take part in the replication of the plasmid hint 3 and ECO R1 are the recognition sites for the restriction endonuclease to act AMPR and T TETR what are they they are actually the antibiotic resistance site so out of the four options which is right option D okay so which is correctly marked here yeah identifies the correct component is the option D they talk about the anti antibiotic resistance genes okay next question here a single strand of nucleic acid tagged with a radioactive molecule is called as dash a single stranded DNA or an RNA which is tagged with a radioactive molecular molecule that is used for hybridization of a DNA or an RNA is actually called a probe the correct answer is option D so anything else that you want to know about a probe so what where else just now we saw a probe for a library genomic library we saw in regardance with that so what is uh, the other things that you can talk about a probe see a probe is a slender flexible rod with a blunt used to explore the example on evening so all that is in terms of uh, biology but when, when you t see in terms of molecular genetics a probe is a labeled bit of DNA or RNA that is used to find its complementary sequence or locate a particular clone therefore the correct answer to this question is option D so with this we complete the first part of biotechnology principles and processes hope to meet you in the next part of the same chapter thank you